Welcome everyone to Mass Effect Andromeda. Now I am a huge fan of the Mass Effect series, the original trilogy I've played uh, numerous times and spent countless number of hours playing through the series. And I play it maybe uh, like some of you, but probably a little different than most in that I, what I love Mass Effect 4 is the story. I'm not particularly interested in combat. I don't like to play it as a first person shooter. So I enjoy the conversations. I enjoy the adventure, seeing what's around the next corner. That's how I enjoy playing it. So any videos that you see me doing on this game will be in, in all likelihood, uh, one of the lower difficulty levels. Uh, like I said, I'm not interested in playing this as a first person shooter or making it difficult. For me, this is one of those games that I play for the story and I find very relaxing to do so. So I'm not interested in a challenging experience. Um, I understand that a lot of you are, and that's that's great. I, I very much understand that. I'm that way with uh, racing simulations. I love the realism and and that type of thing, but not in this game for me. Uh, I'm here for the storyline. I'm here for the adventure. So uh, we're going to start out with a few videos. The first few videos will be just getting started uh, in the game. You can see that it gives us a resume option. I can tell you that the only thing I've done so far in the game is the opening cinematic. And that was essentially just to make sure that the game didn't crash at the very beginning. Now I've read, um, I've purposely stayed away from reading or watching a lot of reviews for the game. About all I know about the game to this point is that it's been getting a lot of grief over the animations from walking to facial expressions, that type of thing. Um, Hopefully that doesn't really distract me too much because I really love to get involved in this game and involved in the characters and really get to know them and that and that sort of thing. So hopefully it doesn't distract from that. As long as it doesn't distract me from from my main goal of the story, then I'll be perfectly fine with whatever's out there. So what we're going to start out with here is we're going to take a look at some settings. And let's just see what we've got. So gameplay settings. We're going to have the tutorials enabled with option to disable, of course. Aim assist, same thing, enable, disable. Audio level, you can see on the right-hand side of the screen, it says that it will automatically distribute skill points uh, as you level up. Assuming that you're not really interested in where your skill points go, I am definitely interested in that type of thing. There are some uh, some skills that I'm interested in. I know there's there's fire, there's the ability to... Uh, like Borderlands, you can throw out your own turret to help you out in battle, something I really enjoyed in Borderlands series. So I'm looking forward to that type thing and what kind of skills I can unlock as we go through the game. Mission tracker, you've got conversation icons, all sorts of stuff. Then you get into the helmets. Do you want to see them? Do you not want to see them? When do you want to see them? Um, I prefer to leave them off in conversations because I don't like looking at the helmets I'm not particularly crazy about the helmet design that I've seen so far in Andromeda, so I'm going to keep them off as much as possible because I want to see the characters, not their helmets. And then the field of view multiplier, I'm leaving uh, dead center right now. Again, we'll see as time goes on. Maybe I need to change that around. So that's your gameplay options, your control options. Uh, and again, pretty much everything, unless I mention it, is at the standard default level so far. Uh, I'm not inverting any axis. So those are both disabled. Mouse sensitivity. Uh, I don't really prefer a very sensitive mouse. I don't like uh, to move the mouse just a little bit and it jump from side to side on the screen. So, uh, so far, it's been very nice at this level, which is the default. I've seen no reason to, uh, to change that. Mouse smoothing, haven't really seen a need for that. Uh, and the sensitivity settings, again, are both at default. And we'll find out about the vehicle and whether or not I need to adjust the mouse for steering and controlling the vehicle. Uh, aiming controls, I prefer the hold. Uh, for instance, in most games, the aiming down sight is the right mouse button. I prefer to hold that. That's just what I'm used to. Same thing with the sprint controls. Hold down the shift. And let's see, everything is set on hold. Vibration won't be an issue because I'm not using a controller. I'm using mouse and keyboard. Uh, if we take a look in audio, dynamic range, let's see, sets the range of volume the game will use. I'm not really sure what all that means. The default is the medium, as well as stereo on the speaker configuration. 
Uh, master volume is all the way up. Now, music volume is something I've turned way down uh, for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, on the recordings, I don't want the music to overpower the recording. So I've turned it down a, a great deal there. But what I've seen so far, it's very soothing music here at the beginning. And we'll see what it turns into during, you know, firefights and that kind of thing. Uh, but pretty much all the volume I've got turned up all the way. Uh, subtitles, I'm actually going to change right now and enable those. I know sometimes, um, I wonder how many people are like me, where you, when you have the subtitles on, you find yourself reading them off the bottom rather than spending a lot of time actually listening. So I may have to come back in and turn that back off. But by the same token, sometimes I'll miss something that was said. So it's helpful for it to be written at the bottom so I can go back and sort of read over it. All right, do you want to apply the changes? Absolutely, I do. Let's take a look at, let's see, let's go language. We're going to use English for both. Video output, we're going to do full screen on my main monitor, which is a 1080p monitor. And so nothing special for the monitor. VSync, I'm leaving at default on. Hopefully that won't cause any issues. I know VSync can cause some, some issues with the video in some games, so we'll see how that goes. High dy dynamic range, we're going to leave that on auto detect. Buffering is on. And I'm using the 64-bit frame buffer format. Again, may have to change some of these if we have any issues. Uh, graphics, my intention is to play with everything on max as long as I'm able to, and I should be able to. I have a, a 10, 1070, one of the newer graphics cards from NVIDIA. So essentially, if I can't think, play this thing on 1080p maxed out, then I'm going to be uh, a little upset. So let's take a look here. You see overall quality is on ultra, and everything else flows from that. Uh, the resolution scale... I'm hoping this isn't supposed to be all the way up. I don't think it is where it, you can see on the right hand side of the screen. We're at 1.0 right now. Um, I'm actually wondering if maybe looks like maybe 2.0 or maybe a little bit higher is the max out. So I'm wondering if maybe that gives you a little bit crisper image than the 1.0. But again, I may have to do some reading on that. And if any of you guys know for sure on that, let me a note in the comments, and but I'm definitely interested in the absolute best graphics that this game has to offer. That's why I spent the money for a 1070 graphics card. So you can see everything else is on the ultra setting or the ultra preset, whether that's high or ultra. So everything, vegetation, terrain, everything on ultra, even the, the shaders on ultra. So we'll move our way back. Let's see what else we've got. Um, online, we won't mess with. I'm probably not going to be doing any multiplayer, at least not that I'm aware of. I haven't done it in any of the previous Mass Effect games, and I believe it was available in Mass Effect 3, if I remember correctly. But again, I'm not really big into multiplayer for this game, so I'm not quite sure. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and jump into character creation. Now, it gives you, at the beginning of the game, you're going to have two options. You can get the quick start with either a male or female character. Okay, so you're looking at Scott or Sarah Ryder, depending if you want to play male or female, or you can customize character. I plan on playing as the default because I had a quick look around the customize and really didn't see anything that I liked, nothing that really caught my eye. But we'll go ahead and take a look in here. So we've got a loading screen. Hopefully it won't take very long. But again, I've, heard, I've seen some criticisms over... The facial animations, both when they're talking, uh, also the walking animations, that kind of thing. So, so we'll see how that goes. So this is your default female character. Okay, so we're going to choose the male character. This is your default. This is Scott Ryder. So if you choose to play as a male. Now, my understanding is that regardless of whether you play as male or female, both of the characters will be in the game. So if you're playing as male, then your twin sister will actually be in the game. Now, I have no idea how that's going to play out from the story uh, perspective, but I do know that both are in the game. So let's, you can see we can customize appearance, training, and then we do names, customize your twin, and then some history. So let's just take a, a glance at customizing appearance. Okay, so we got the default appearance or the custom appearance. All right, let's see. So we Start out by choosing uh, which face we would like. So we've got option one. 
Option number two, something does look a little bit off about, about the models here. It, not that it's terrible or anything, but it just something looks a little off to me. Uh, and so far, the main thing for me is I haven't really found any reason not to use the default at this point. So we've got nine to choose from, and we've also got custom. Now the custom doesn't seem to be working. Okay, so we're going to go back with, I'm going to press escape and we're going to get, okay, so we'll go customize appearance and let's go back to, to the default. Now choosing the training and reading off the right hand side of the screen now. So the special training that was received by your character before joining the Andromeda Initiative. This training determines what power you'll have to start and what skills you'll gain early access to. So let's go ahead and see what we've got here. So we start off by default with security. And our starting power is a concussive shot. Okay, so it's a heat-seeking high-impact round to knock down opponents. Okay, that sounds pretty useful. And then we'll also unlock the skills of turbocharge and combat fitness. Okay, so turbocharge grants a massive short-term boost to weapon fire rate and also the efficiency of our thermal clip. Then combat fitness grants us increased durability and the option to carry more weapons into battle. So that sounds more like uh, health and maybe carry weight. The biotic gives us a starting power of throwing. Now, if you've watched any of the uh, pre preliminary videos that they've released, you'll see that this biotic power shown off as they pick up enemies and and other like crates and and barrels and things that throw them at the enemy so that can definitely be useful so then you got singularity and barrier as well okay not really interested so much in the biotic although that's probably where the fire the ability to shoot fire is probably coming from let's see what technician has to offer so we've got overload which unleashes a electrostatic charge uh, or discharge that deals high damage to shields and synthetic enemies. We're probably going to be seeing a lot of synthetic enemies. Okay, so probably whenever we upgrade it, we can chain it to multiple targets. Then we got our skills of invasion and team support. So we'll be able to hack into our opponent's armor and weapons. Now, hacking, so that's a, a different element into the game. Okay, so we'll be able to infect them with a computer virus to weaken their defenses. Interesting, that... That could very, very much be useful. All right, so let's see. The team support. We keep going down. Okay, it looks like that's all it is on each of these. Not much left. Okay, then we got the leader perk. Let's see what this gives. Energy drain. Drain your target shields to replenish your own. Very nice. And it says it's especially effective against synthetic enemies, so we seem to be getting multiple bonus against those. And then Annihilation, which always sounds good, uh, especially, especially if you're into destroying things, then Annihilation is always a good skill. So we've got Mass Effect Shields, interesting. And Slowly Damages Nearby Foes, okay. Then Team Support, de develop specialized technology to boast the survivability of your entire squad. I like the sound of that one. I was actually hoping that this would uh, maybe give me some perks on conversation options because that's something I always like, the, the ability to be persuasive, whether it's uh, Paragon or Renegade, which I understand are not in this game uh, per se, those conversation options. But still, the ability to persuade others is a very useful trait. So let's see, Scrapper, what do we get here? And so you're always the first soldier to be in the middle of a fight. And so charge, launch yourself like a comet at opponents. Now that, that could be fun to watch for sure. And regain a portion of your shields on impact. That sounds like more like something that a Krogan would have. And then combat fitness, uh, increased durability and the option to carry more weapons. Okay, that's similar to uh, security, I believe. Yeah, there we go. Combat fitness is a skill there as well. Okay, then you unlock the skill of charge which is also your starting power, okay? And then operative, let's see what we have here. So in the military, you study covert operations and special forces type knowledge, interesting. 
and a tactical cloak which employed light bending technology to become invisible for a short duration. And who hasn't wanted to become invisible in their lifetime? And you can definitely see a lot of, of reason that that would be useful on the battlefield. So you gain a large damage bonus when you break cloak to attack. Okay, so sneak attack type stuff. Combat fitness again shows up here and then tactical cloak. So essentially what we've got is we've got your firepower options for security. And of course you've got your biotics, which have the real cool factor for me right now. The ability to pick up objects and throw them and who knows what else you can unlock along this particular path. Uh, technician, I'm not really seeing a whole lot there. Um, right now, although that's what I have the most hope for because you can operate drones and do some hacking. So that, that's what I have the most hope for, but it doesn't look like it's the greatest at the very beginning. Leader perk, I'm a big fan of. So right now they're wanting us to go by default, the security option. I'm leaning toward either biotic or technician for my playthrough. Uh, but now the good thing is my understanding, again, in the limited amount of information, because I've intentionally tried not to gain a whole lot of information about the game because I wanted to experience everything on my own. But my understanding is that you're not really locked in. I mean, whenever you make this initial selection of, say, security by default, it does not mean in any way that you can't have other options unlocked. It's simply where you begin. So I like that idea. So on one hand, I'm looking at technician because I'm thinking, okay, that's where my turret is going to be most likely because we learned to operate drones. So I'm guessing that is going to be very helpful uh, with my Borderlands type turret action. Then I'm also thinking Biotic is going to let me shoot fire out of my hand. So, I mean, who wouldn't enjoy that? So these are my two real options at the moment. Uh, to start off with, I think I'm actually going to go Technician. Did it actually do that? Yeah, it did. There you go. Ooh, so we can change our name. Well, of course we're going to change our name. We're going to be Brian, and I really wish I could change that last name, but my guess is that most of the game, if not all of the game's dialogue, is probably going to use the last name since it works for both genders. Okay, let's go ahead and enter there. Customize our twin. We're probably going to get similar options here. Uh, basically, female versions of head one, head two, head three to match the male versions on each of those. Wow, that is not a good character model at all right there. Some of these models just don't look quite right to me. Uh, again, maybe I'm a little jaded based off of some of the things I'd heard before the game. Let's see, can you spin these around? Yeah, you can. Kind of wanted to see the back of that hairdo. That looks like a painful tattoo, by the way. Okay, so let's go back. Hit escape there. All right, customized twin. Let's go back to the default twin and customize history. There we go. History selection. Ah, so now we're going back to the original game. And I'm going to go with customize history is male shepherd, which you can see on the right hand side of the screen. Upload character data. Let's see, check this option to upload your character to the website where you can re-import in the future or share with your friends. Okay, well, that's, and then import. So I'm assuming that's, yeah, that's if you later want to come back and get that. Okay, not too bad. All right, so at this particular point in time, we're not going to start the game. That's going to be a separate video. Uh, but for this video, I just wanted to take a look at some of the basic options, uh, just getting started with some of the graphic options the audio options, uh, that type of thing, and then also the character creation options. Look at, I, I ended up going with the default, spin our guy back around here. I ended up going with the default, which is a little bit troubling because I really didn't see 
you know, there were nine options there, but none of them really uh, caught my eye. Now there's some more in-depth customization that you can do and really get uh, get in with, uh, for example, if I come back in, you can get into, if we go back to this, we can go into customizing the face and the brow, cheek, chin, you know, and so on, and really get some crazy characters, I'm sure. Uh, you can do the hairstyle. Let's see what kind of hairstyles we have available here. There we go. With the lighting, you can barely see it. Looks like an afro there. I mean, so they've got some options for you, that's for sure. And some different hairstyles. Let's see, you customize the eyes. I even put makeup up. I'm sure we're going to see some interesting creations doing that. And then your scars and tattoos. So there's some options there if you're interested in that sort of thing. But for me, I just got to say, I'm just not seeing anything uh, that would lead me to, to want to make many changes. So we're just going to go with the default. So thank you very much for joining me in our first video. And stay tuned for more Mass Effect.